Hey everyone, welcome back to part nine in our series here called Wrecking Ball. It's great to be back with you uh, and as we look at different ways that we wreck our lives. And I will try to be a little more computer savvy today. Today we're looking at the ninth commandment. And I want to set things up by talking about something that's kind of interesting to all of us here in the Pacific Northwest this year and it's a little concerning because we are short on rainfall and for those of you who live here in the Pacific Northwest with me then you know that we live in one of the most heavily forested areas in the United States and one of the things that you may not know about my wife and I is that our youngest son serves in the National Guard and as soon as he was assigned duty to his unit uh, they sent him to firefighting school apparently when you complete firefighting school you're given what they call a red card and uh, here's a picture of my son in his firefighting uniform this is this is our son Dan I don't know how well you can see this but yeah uh, as soon as they he got his red card you know he went got called up to fire duty in eastern Washington where they had multiple fires burning there is actually an app you can get on your phone it's called wildfire info and I found this out from my cousin whose son was an Oregon hotshot at the time and the hot shots are the guys they call in when a fire is getting out of control. And these guys are trained on how to stay safe and help bring a fire under control. What is interesting about wildfires and is the destruction that they cause. They can burn down complete forests. They destroy homes. They, they destroy property. They cause death and countless animals, even people. And some of these fires are so large they even give them proper names like uh like as if they have an identity usually they're just identified by the by the geographic location but as summer kicks underway here with so little rainfall rainfall we're very likely to have a very bad fire year and so this kind of brings us to today's key verse it's exodus 20 16 it says uh, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, Exodus 20, 16. So with that in mind, listen to what James, uh, Jesus' uh, brother, talks about in chapter 3, verse 5. He says, the tongue is a small part of the body, but consider what a great forest is set on blaze by a small spark. Now, my, my wife and I raised our kids in the outskirts of Bellingham, up near the Canadian border. And one day, uh, a gas pipeline burst, and the crew overseeing the pipeline didn't realize that they were continuing to pump gasoline through it. And so the gasoline began to flow down through uh, this break in the pipe, and it, it eventually found a stream called Whatcom Creek. And, uh, and there are waterfalls along Whatcom Creek, and. It, in fact, it flows through a park that even has a fish, fish hatchery. Anyway, the gasoline continued to flow down the stream, and a couple boys who were playing the, in the park noticed that the water began to have a rainbow tint to it. Out of curiosity, one of the boys decided if he could light the creek on fire, and he got out a book of matches, and he lit one, and the entire creek burst into flames. The flames traveled upstream and, and downstream very rapidly, eventually finding the section of the pipeline where the leak was and caused it to explode. Uh, our company, uh, at the time, this was before I was a, a pastor, our company was building a, a duplex. And uh, this is an aerial view. Hopefully you can see that okay. The red line here is the path of the stream and the, and the extent of the burn along the creek. Uh, thankfully, those were all well-watered trees along there. Uh, this little orange dot represents our construction project that we had going at the time, uh, less than a half a block from where all this major devastation took place. Yeah, uh, all, a little, all the little boy did was strike a match, and all this major devastation took place. When the gasoline burst into flames. It consumed all the oxygen along the creek, and three young boys lost their lives that day. Firefighters were quickly deployed uh, uh, to 
fight the fire along the path of the of the stream, but yeah. Anyway, it's in, well, any. This young boy brought more grief to his parents than he could imagine as they mourned the loss of their son when they found out that he was in the park. What a picture. What a word picture this is that the brother of Jesus is describing regarding the words that come out of our mouths and the potential they have for destruction. And by that, I mean that one, just like one little match sparks a fire that brings incredible destruction. Uh, and this brings us to our key thought for today. And, and this is what I want us to go out the door with, so to speak, but is that one little word that comes out of your mouth, two little words that come out of your mouth, a stream of little words that come out of your mouth can start a fire that can burn people's lives down to the ground. When I was a young boy, if I said something that I shouldn't say, my grandma who lived with, lived with us would say, bite your tongue, <laughs> bite your tongue. It's just an expression in the English language, a figure of speech that means stop talking like that. And it's the title of our message today. The words that come out of your mouth have so much power. Now, maybe you're saying, Pastor Paul, what do you mean? What do you mean my words can start a fire? What do you mean my words can burn somebody's life down? What do you mean that my words can burn my marriage to the ground? Well, that's what we're going to find out today as we look at this ninth commandment. So get out your uh, note paper if you're going to take, uh, take notes. And I've got some blanks to fill in for those of us who uh, have the sermon note page. Anyway, uh, I have two main thoughts for us today about the words that come out of our mouths, your mouth and my mouth. So here we go. Number one, Roman numeral number one, God condemns words that burn. Well, I, mean, I always get mixed up on this, don't I? <laughs> God condemns words that burn. Uh, so now with that in mind, uh, let me listen to uh, the commandment number nine. God says, thou shalt not. Now in part one of this series, if you listen to that, you'll recall that we looked at how some of these, well, commandments are like the, some of the commandments are like the white lines on the side of the road. They guide us. They keep us from, from getting off track. But other commandments are, they, you know, are like that double yellow line. Thou shalt not cross this line. And God says, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. So heads up here, because God is giving a strict prohibition to his people against bearing false witness. This is a prohibition against spreading a lie against your neighbor. And by the way, according to your Bible, anybody other than you is your neighbor, okay? So to put it another way, it's all people. It's all people. By the way, write this down as capital A, just so we make sure to get it. This command has to do with how you treat people. That's it's pretty simple, isn't it? It has to do with how you treat people. So put your thinking caps on for a minute, folks, because remember, when you look at the Ten Commandments, the first four have to do with how you treat God. Remember, we looked at this briefly a few weeks back. Number one, love God. Number two, worship God. Number three, hallow God's name. And number four, keep God's Sabbath. So the first four are about our vertical relationship, how you treat God. But check this out. The following six have to do with how you treat your neighbors. In fact, Jesus said, you can take those first four commandments and you can boil them down into one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And the remaining six commandments, according to Jesus, can be boiled down to this. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. So love people. If you call yourself a Christian, I want you to pay special attention here and lean into what I'm about to say, because if you are a Christian, that makes you God's daughter. If you're a Christian, that makes you God's son. And, and that means God Almighty is your dad. It means God Almighty is your father. And I want to tell you something about your father. Your father cares about people. 
Your, your father cares how you treat people. Yeah. And so as his son or daughter, you are a reflection of your dad, right? Your heavenly father. And people are taking their cues about what God is like from you. Okay? God says, I want you to care about people like I care about people. I want you, Christian, to treat people like I would treat people. I want you to speak to people and speak about people in ways that build them up. So with that in mind, write this down as capital B. Bearing false witness burns people down. Bearing false witness burns people down. Th that's why God says, thou shalt not bear false witness. Why is God so strong on this? Hmm? You wonder that? Because spreading a lie about someone can burn down their reputation. Let me say that again. Spreading a false story about somebody could burn down a very good name. And listen, I can think of nothing more hateful you could do to another person than to spread rumors and lies and false accusations against them in a way that begins to tear down who they are before other people. So here's the point. Write these down as one, two, three, and four. Words can be flammable. Yeah, words can be flammable. Jesus or James says this, and I don't know how much more picturesque you can make it. He says, the tongue is also a fire. Yeah. You say, meaning what? Friends, this, this is a fire starter, right? Yeah, words that come off your tongue can start fires that are hard to put out. Wars have started because of words. We're, we're lucky we didn't start World War III when our president called the, pres you know, the president of Russia a killer. Oh, my goodness. Marriages have burned down because of words. Yeah, people never speak to uh, one another for the rest of their life sometimes because of something someone said. Because the words, because of the words that come out of someone's mouth and they go quiet, they don't, they, they quit talking to that person for the rest of their life. And we can be like the kid who started the fire. Well, all I did was strike a match and suddenly the air was sucked out of the room. All I said was, and here's what God's trying to teach us. Write this down as little number two, words can burn down relationships. And you know, some people never figure this out. They go through life burning down relationships. And you know what they almost always say? All I said to her was blank. And you know, and she lost it. Or all I said to him was, and he divorced me. All I said to them was blank. And they got depressed. And they go through their life torching relationships with their husbands and with their wife and their sons and their daughters and their co-workers or business partners. Maybe it's with their teammates or classmates and they never get it. They never get it that it's the words coming out of their mouth. Listen, a lot of the regrets that we have relation-wise with other people could be avoided if we would just watch what we would say. If we would just bite our tongue. Yeah. This is why Psalm 141 says this. Set a guard over the door of my mouth. Is it over the door of my mouth? I did this. Oh, yeah. And keep watch over the door of my lips. Sorry. In other words, God, God, guard my mouth, God. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Lock that baby shut if you have to. <laughs> This is a prayer. You know, God, please help me to watch my mouth. Why? Because my mouth, your mouth can burn down any relationship. You can burn down your relationship with your husband or your wife or, or your son or your daughter or your best friend, your coworkers. In fact, words that are sarcastic words, that are cutting, words that are demeaning are highly flammable. Things like, you're so stupid. Or, or words like, you're ugly. Words like, I wish I was as pretty as she is. Those are 
<laughs> I wish you were as pretty as she is. Man, those are highly flammable words. And here's what you need to know. Um, these are highly flammable words. And write this down as small number three. Flammable words can burn down a life. Look at, look at Proverbs uh, 18 with me here for a second. 1821. The tongue has the power of life and death. Life and death. You say meaning what? This little two ounce mucous membrane slab tucked between those high, between your ivory palace gates has the power to give life to people. It can inspire and encourage people, but that same instrument can kill. It can kill a person's belief in themselves. It can kill their self-esteem. It can kill their marriage. It can, it can cause them to even want to kill themselves. Isn't it true that we are very much aware about how other people's words impact us? But we can be totally clueless about how our words impact them. We can be totally clueless about how dripping with sarcasm our words can be. We can be totally clueless about how cutting our words can be. We can be totally clueless about how loud we are being with a child. And this is one that hits home to me. I remember, you know, as a contractor having to wear earplugs all day and you're talking over the sound of compressors and saws and nails and nail guns and all that noise pollution on a construction job site and jackhammers sometimes and so you all day you're shouting to be heard because the other guy's got his earplugs in and you know so you, you put the earplugs in to cut out the noise that would damage your hearing and then you have to shout and I come home from work talking really loud <laughs> yeah and that could be hard it was hard on my on my oldest son until my wife helped me figure that out we can be totally clueless about how our words themselves are hurtful. And by the way, do you remember, maybe you didn't hear this, uh, you might be younger than I, never heard this, but there was, we had a childhood rhyme we, we learned, sticks and stones can break my bones, but words can never hurt me. What a lie that is. Shoot. Words can be more hurtful than sticks and stones. They're more, they are more hurtful. And I mean, you can get whacked by a stick and get over it. You can get whacked by a rock. But there are words that can come out of your mouth that the people will never get over. You can say something in a little spark. So flammable. So flammable. And it burns someone so bad they never get over it. They carry the hurt and the pain for the rest of their lives. You know, nowadays, it seems to be a cool thing to dish out sarcasm on someone else in order to build yourself up. Uh, and Or they might call someone a fool, you know, or label someone stupid. But listen to what Jesus says about cutting words. He says, anyone who says, you fool, by the way, the Greek word for that is moron. Anyone who says that will be in danger of the fire of what? Yeah, hell. Now, you might ask, Pastor Paul, what does that mean? You know, I'm not quite sure, but I can tell you this. You better deal drastically with what you're saying to other people or about other people. Jesus says, deal drastically with the words that are coming out of your mouth, or Jesus says he will. Yeah, and I don't know what that looks like, but it's enough to make it a little bit nervous, isn't it? I wonder today, how many of us would say, I'm not the one lighting the fire, I'm the one getting burned. I'm the one getting torched by what other people say, Pastor Paul. I'll tell you what. Write this down. It's number four. Cheesme delights in spreading the flames. That's just a, 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 Spanish, a Spanish expression. It means juicy gossip, right? Juicy gossip. Yeah. Go you can write in gossip on your, uh, if that helps you remember it better. Gossip, uh, you know, is, yeah, gossip delights in spreading the flames. It, uh, it, anyway, thou shalt not bear false witness. The word bear is about spreading it, 
spreading it. Thou shalt not uh, spread false witness. Uh, and a bearer of tales, or a, a, you know, don't be a bearer of tales or a gossip. She's may is uh, she she's may is from the Spanish. It means give me the lowdown, give me the dirt, yeah, give me the flammable stuff, so I can spread it like wildfire. Folks, don't miss this. Gossips, the people that like spreading failure of other people, they can't wait to strike the match and set the flames of fire. This is why the book of Proverbs, which is a book of wisdom, has so much to say about gossip. Look at what Proverbs 26 says. Without wood, a fire goes out. Huh? With, you know, sometimes they really state the obvious, don't they? Without a gossip, a quarrel dies down. But listen, a gossip doesn't want the quarrel to die down. They want to add fuel to the fire. And mind you folks, a gossip can be very skillful in hiding their habits. They might come up to you with downcast eyes. Mm, have you heard about so-and-so? Mm, she's so stupid. That boy, oh, have you heard about what's going on with them? And they love it. They love it. But God hates gossip. And he has advice for us about not hanging out with gossips. It's in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 13. He says, a gossip betrays a confidence. A gossip betrays a confidence. What does that mean? It means that if someone will talk about someone behind their back to you, they will talk about you behind your back. Yeah, God says, get away from them. Yeah. Listen to Proverbs 16, verse 28 here. It says, a perverse person stirs up conflict and a gossip separates close friends. You know what? You know what gossip does? Gossip gets into a circle of friends and it divides one of them off and pulls everybody else over. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't fit in with us. And they separate friends. If someone is trying to do that, run okay you teenagers if someone's trying to do that at school get out of that group get away from that person run they're probably gonna yeah they're probably gonna gossip about you when you do though so just be aware of it <laughs> the words of a gossip are like choice morsels they go down to the innermost parts proverb 18 says proverbs 18 in other words they hurt a person at the deepest level of heart and soul. And by the way, with the advent of social media, somebody can gossip out us, gossip about us, and start a wildfire that is nearly impossible to put out. Did you know that the middle school and high school kids suicide rates now are at an all-time high? Many of these, you know, school shootings were sparked by a social media gossip storm yeah it's also seemingly acceptable for kids now to kill themselves why well of course it's acceptable why would you want to be torched every day of your life watch out for social media you know there's a reason you don't see me uh, promoting Facebook <laughs> I don't do Facebook very often it's usually grandkid pictures or maybe a picture from vacation or something I don't want everyone to know everything about me. You know, I don't want to know every everyone to know every time I'm sitting down to eat something. I don't need to, you know, take a picture of my dinner plate, you know, and to and to get a thumbs up, you know. I get my thumbs up from God, okay? I don't need everyone's affirmation of me. So beware of it, right? And God forbid that you or I should set ever set anybody on fire with our words. Okay? Enough of the negative. How about we end on a positive note today, right? Here's the positive. Write this down as Roman numeral number two. Whereas God condemns words that burn down, Roman numeral number two says God commands words that bless. God commands words that bless. Yeah, there it is. Um, let's jump back to our passage in James chapter 3. And look at the rest of that passage, okay? 
as he talked about, yeah, uh, God commands words of thing out of that same mouth, James says in 3.10, 3.10, comes blessing. Yeah, you can use, you know, God is saying to you and me that out of this same mouth that you might be speaking words that hurt people, out of that same mouth can come blessing. You don't need a new mouth. Yeah, you can use the same mouth because you can speak words to bless people. And when you leverage your words to speak blessing to people, you're never more like your Father in heaven. I'd like to point out a couple things before we finish here. We can write these down as A and B. Excuse me. Still catching up for the 4th of July fireworks (laughs) non-sleeping. Okay, capital A. Speak the blessing to people. Not just a blessing, the blessing. One of the most beautiful acts that we read about in the Bible is the act of speaking the blessing to someone. Let me tell you what I mean. In, in other words, when someone spoke the blessing to their son or daughter or their husband or wife, it was always very special. Because when you spoke the blessing to them, what you were doing was speaking words of favor upon them. It's that simple. Words of affirmation. You're speaking words of ex- acceptance on, on that person. And receiving the blessing is, blessing is very powerful, especially if it's coming from someone you admire. Or someone you love, maybe a father or a mother, a husband or a wife. Um, biblical example. When Isaac spoke, spoke the blessing on Jacob, the blessing was so inspiring to Jacob, he rose up and started the nation that we know today as Israel. The words of blessing that you speak to others can be a game changer. Parents, when you bless your kids, you are building them up in ways you cannot fully appreciate. And friends, there are people in your life, lives, life, your life, your lives, <laughs> depends if more, more than one of you are listening, right? But hey, these people long to hear you speak the blessing to them. It could be a husband. It could be a wife. It could be a son or a daughter or a co-worker. Listen, when God puts somebody on your mind to speak the blessing, do it right then. You can text them. Tell them how awesome they have been in your life. You never know. You might be saving a person's life. And for God's sake, write this down as letter B. Don't withhold the blessing. Huh? Don't withhold the blessing. Because listen, just just as life-giving as it is to speak the blessing to someone, to withhold that, can be equally deadly. There are grown-ups all around us who never receive the blessing from their parents, and it still affects them to this day, struggling this to this day because they never received the blessing. Husbands who never received the blessing from their wives, wives who never received the blessing from their husbands, who struggle and are depressed. You see, that is the power of a blessing. Now, Some of you might be like, Pastor Paul, you don't understand. You don't know what my son or daughter is like. Yeah, I will speak the blessing when she changes, uh, when she stops doing what she's doing. Or I can't speak the blessing to my husband or wife because they are so stupid. When they change, then, when they change, then I will speak the blessing. No, no, no. You go ahead and speak the blessing now. Find something positive that you like. And just bless them by affirming it. Sometimes you're standing at a crossroad in life. Someone may have confessed something to you about something they did uh, to you in the past or something they said. And the words that come out of your mouth next will be so important. Proverbs said, says that a, a fitly spoken word is like apples of gold. I mean, think about how how valuable an a, a golden apple would be. I mean, the thing would probably weigh 20 pounds. An apple of gold in a fitting of silver. Oh, yeah, what a word picture. Speak the blessing when you get an opportunity and watch the burden lift off your spouse. Watch the burden lift off your coworker or your son or your daughter. And can I just give us one, one more quick encouragement? Write this down as letter C. 
God speaks his blessing on you. God speaks his blessing on you. And I'm talking about everybody listening to this video. Uh, yeah, we're at Genesis chapter 5. If you've got your Bible, turn there with me to verses 1 and 2. It says, oh, come on, did I not get that slide? I guess I didn't get that slide. I apologize. We're going to just, oh, golly. <laughs> okay, yeah. Genesis 5, 1 and 2, it says this. When God created mankind, he made them in the likeness of God. He created them male and female. Oh, that's a whole other can of worms today, isn't it? Male and female, and he blessed them. How much clearer could God speak the blessing on you than to say, when he made you, he made you in his likeness. Wow. He made you in his likeness. That means there is something of God in you. Every one of you listening. Every time God looks at you, he sees something of himself in you. It's his likeness. It's his image. And that is the voice of truth. It's not out there on social media. It's not what the crowd says. It's not, uh, you know, oh yeah, Taiwan. I've been praying a lot for the people in Taiwan. I hope you are too. Uh, this was in a park there. I think this is Ch where Chiang Kai-shek got buried. Anyway, beautiful bridge. I've always loved the architecture of the Far East. It's so fascinatingly different from us here in the West. But don't listen to social media. It's not what the crowd says or at school or at work. It's what God says. And when you hear, when you hear, I'm made in the image of God, you're hearing the voice of truth, okay? You are made in the image of God. That's the voice of truth. And there are all kinds of voices out there and that, that want to tell you who you are. And it's often Satan bearing false witness against you with a lie. And sometimes you can bear false witness against yourself, you know? Someone, you know... In your head, somebody says, you're ugly, and you agree with them. Come on, girls, don't do that. And you feel terrible about yourself. Someone says, you'll never amount to anything, and you'll find yourself agreeing with them. You know, I will never amount to anything. And it's not true. It's a lie. Somebody says, you'll never measure up. You say, you know, I will never measure up. That is a lie straight from hell. God says... I will tell you who you are. Nobody else. You listen to his voice. And God says, I'll tell you who you are. That's all we have today, friends. I hope you uh, enjoyed this ninth commandment. I'm trying to present these in a slightly different way than you've probably heard them before. Thanks for uh, joining in. Thank you for those of you who are speaking blessing into our YouTube ministry here. And uh, if you're ready to do in-person services, we are open at 11 o'clock on Sunday mornings at Southfield Baptist Church for our uh, collective wor worship time. So may God bless you and may he make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance. I, I just pray that God smiles every time he thinks of you and he's never not thinking of you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. It's perfect peace. And it's a peace that the world can't understand. Yeah, it's crazy good stuff. Thanks for being here. Until next time, God bless. And we'll see you back here next week. Unless he sounds that trumpet and calls us to be with him. Until then, though. Okay, bye-bye.